तमसो मां ज्योतिर गमया सेठ आनंद राम जयपुरिया ग्रुप ऑफ एजुकेशनल इंस्टीट्यूशंस कैरीज अ लेगेसी ऑफ 76 प्लस इयर्स इन द एजुकेशन डोमेन द विजन ऑफ सेठ आनंद राम जयपुरिया टू प्रमोट एजुकेशन वाज कैरीड फॉरवर्ड बाय हिज सन श्री मुंगतुराम जयपुरिया एंड ग्रैंडसन डॉक्टर राजा राम जयपुरिया टुडे श्री शिशिर जयपुरिया is carrying forward the legacy of empowering the new generation jaipuria group started its journey with sait anand ram jaipuria college in kolkata established in 1945 today the group runs 14 k12 schools five preschools two management institutions and a teachers training academy in north and central india the group's network is spread across 11 cities and has the strength of 20000 students 15000 alumni and more than 800 educators established in 1974 sait anand ram jaipuria school kanpur is the most sought after school in the city the school is also part of the coveted round square group of institutions which provides global exposure to students Sait Anand Ram Jaipuria School Ghaziabad was established in 2004 and has a wide base of 5000 students the school is known for its academic rigor as it has produced national toppers in CBSE examination for three consecutive years One of the recent achievements by a student came in 2021 when the class 12 student Pal Agarwal became one of the national toppers in JEE Main with a 100 percentile. Sait Anand Ram Jaipuria School Lucknow established in 2016 has gained enviable reputation for its digital interventions. It is the first Microsoft showcase school in the city and one among the 200 Microsoft showcase schools in the country. In February 2021 the school launched a state of the art senior block with world class facilities for top class education and holistic development such as shooting and archery range, a swimming pool, a gymnasium, a robotics club, a filmmaking and editing studio, a radio jockey room. and the taekwondo arena little one the jaipuria preschool is a great place for toddlers to learn through play with focus on interactive sessions the excellence of foundational education provided at little one schools under the able guidance of miss dhwani jaipuria was recognized by elets with an award for the leading preschool chain national Jaipuria Institute of Management Ghaziabad was established in 2001 with a clear vision of developing the capabilities of young managers in a global environment the B school has been accredited grade A by NAC for its commitment to excellence and offers an AKTU approved 2 year full time MBA program in various specializations <music> Jaipuria School of Business Ghaziabad was established in 2008 with a vision of transforming young minds to make them future ready The institute's commitment to excellence was recently recognized with an award for the best management college in India for placement by Integrated Chamber of Commerce and Industry ICCI. In 2020, amidst the COVID pandemic, Sait Anand Ram Jaipuria Group launched a teachers training academy called Samarthya Teachers Training Academy of Research which has still now provided training to more than 8000 man hours of teachers in over 60 online trainings working for the capacity building of teachers across 100 schools Guinea Filaments Limited is a flagship company started by Dr Raja Ram Jaipuria in 1990 
It is one of the largest textile units in India with a turnover of 850 crore rupees. The company produces baby care, cosmetics, home care, hair care, skin care, medical and hygienic products for leading brands. Under corporate social responsibility, Sait Anandram Jaipuriya Group has Smriti Bhavans in different holy cities such as Chitrakoot, Vrindavan and Haridwar. Jaipuriya Group runs a charitable eye hospital for underprivileged people in Navalgarh, Rajasthan. In the name of Sait Anandram Jaipuriya Eye Hospital, which started in 1943 and has treated more than 2 lakh patients till now. Ram Darshan Monument is one of the attractive places in Chitrakoot run by Jaipuriya Group. The group promotes Vedic education through Ved Bhavan Vidyalaya at five pilgrimage places. In 2021, Jaipuriya Group of Educational Institutions was officially certified as great place to work in India. Jaipuriya Group was evaluated for its work culture, environment, pride, camaraderie, credibility, maximizing human potential, trust, values, leadership, innovation, great place for women and corporate social responsibility etc. through employee survey and culture audit. Moving ahead, Sait Anandram Jaipuriya Group plans to expand its reach to Tier 2 and Tier 3 cities by opening 25 K-12 schools across North India in next five years. The group is determined to foster quality education and prepare the youth of the country for Industry 4.0. Jaipuriya Group of Education Institutions Empower, Enthuse, Excel. Tamaso Ma Jyotir Gamaya Sait Anandram Jaipuriya Group of Educational Institutions carries a legacy of 76 plus years in the education domain. The vision of Sait Anandram Jaipuriya to promote education was carried forward by his son Sri Munturam Jaipuriya and grandson Dr. Raja Ram Jaipuriya. Today, Sri Shishir Jaipuriya is carrying forward the legacy of empowering the new generation. Jaipuriya Group started its journey with Sait Anandram Jaipuriya College in Kolkata, established in 1945. Today, the group runs 14 K-12 schools, 5 preschools, 2 management institutions and a teacher's training academy in North and Central India. The group's network is spread across 11 cities and has the strength of 20,000 students, 15,000 alumni and more than 800 educators. Established in 1974, Sait Anandram Jaipuriya School, Kanpur is the most sought after school in the city. The school is also part of the coveted round square group of institutions which provides global exposure to students. Sait Anandram Jaipuriya School Ghaziabad was established in 2004 and has a wide base of 5,000 students. 
the school is known for its academic rigor as it has produced national toppers in CBSE examination for three consecutive years. One of the recent achievements by a student came in 2021 when the class 12 student Pal Agarwal became one of the national toppers in JEE Main with a 100 percentile. St. Anandram Jaipuriya School, Lucknow, established in 2016, has gained enviable reputation for its digital interventions. It is the first Microsoft Showcase School in the city and one among the 200 Microsoft Showcase Schools in the country. In February 2021, the school launched a state-of-the-art senior block with world-class facilities for top-class education and holistic development such as shooting, an archery range, a swimming pool, a gymnasium, a robotics club, a filmmaking and editing studio, a radio jockey room and a taekwondo arena. Little one, the Jaipuria Preschool is a great place for toddlers to learn through play with focus on interactive sessions. The excellence of foundational education provided at Little One Schools under the able guidance of Miss Dhwani Jaipuria was recognized by ELETS with an award for the leading preschool chain, National. Jaipuria Institute of Management, Ghaziabad was established in 2001 with a clear vision of developing the capabilities of young managers in a global environment. The B School has been accredited Grade A by NAC for its commitment to excellence and offers an AKTU approved two-year full-time MBA program in various specializations. <music> Jaipuria School of Business, Ghaziabad was established in 2008 with a vision of transforming young minds to make them future ready. The Institute's commitment to excellence was recently recognized with an award for the best management college in India for placement by integrated Where the mind is without fear and the head is held high. Where knowledge is free. Where words come out from the depth of truth. Where tireless striving stretches its arms towards perfection. Into that heaven of freedom, my father, let my country awake. With these inspiring words of the Nobel laureate Rabindranath Tagore, mm -hmm. I... Anika Chib, on behalf of St. Anandaram Jaipurya Group, extend a hearty welcome to all the distinguished guests to the third Dr. Raja Ram Jaipurya Memorial Lecture. The lecture today is on building strong and resilient India through visionary leadership, which echoes the progressive vision of India held by Dr. Raja Ram Jaipurya an industrialist par excellence and a philanthropist who believed in giving back to society. He firmly believed in the words, we make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. I, Ashlesha Mishra, take this opportunity to welcome our revered chief guest, Swami Sparupanandji, the global head of Chinmaya Mission. I also extend a heartfelt welcome to the senior most member of the Jaipuria family, 
respected Suniti Devi Jaipurya, wife of late Dr. Rajaram Jaipurya. I would also like to welcome Sri Shri Jaipurya, Chairman Sayyid Anandram Jaipurya Group of Educational Institutions. I'm equally delighted to welcome Srimati Sunita Jaipurya, Sri Saket Jaipurya, and Sri Yash Jaipurya. A warm welcome to each and everyone. We now have the invocation ceremony by the students of Sayyid Anandaram Jaipurya School with the chanting of mantras from the Upanishad and Bhagavad Gita. Memorial Lecture represents the great legacy of Sayyid Anandaram Jaipurya group. It carries forward Dr. Rajaram Jaipurya's vision of an India that embraces modernity with its rich traditions. Noted visionaries and personalities of great eminence have delivered the previous two editions of the lectures. We are delighted to share a few glimpses of the previous lectures and some excerpts of the special moments of the group. May we have the video, please? Dr. Raja Ram Jaipuria Memorial Lecture was launched in the year 2019 to pay homage to the late philanthropist, industrialist and educationist Dr. Raja Ram Jaipuria. Born in 1934, Dr. Raja Ram Jaipuria was an inspiring entrepreneur whose zeal for nation building manifested in different aspects of his professional and philanthropic life. He was a leader par excellence in managing industries like textiles, sugar, synthetic fiber and education. While presiding over one of the largest conglomerates of textile empire, he nurtured a strong desire to contribute to the growth and development of the country through various modes. A man rooted in traditional values, Dr. Jaipuria was equally a strong proponent of the progressive thought. He desired to choose the medium of education as the most powerful tool to serve the nation. Pursuing this vision, he took Sait Anandram Jaipuria group to great heights by setting up 14 K-12 schools, 5 preschools and 2 business schools. Today the group is also running a teacher's training academy named Samarthya Teachers Training Academy of Research, STAR. Alongside this, he remained actively engaged in several philanthropic projects, which included establishing the Jaipuria Smriti Bhavans, affordable guest houses for pilgrims in the holy cities of Haridwar, Vrindavan and Chitrakoot. In the year 2000, he was instrumental in establishing Ram Darshan, 
a monument in Chitrakoot dedicated to the life and work of Lord Ram. A coffee table book on Ram Darshan was released in 2018 by the Honorable President Sri Ram Nath Kovind. To pay an illustrious tribute to the distinguished life of Dr. Raja Ram Jaipuria and to honor his legacy, Dr. Raja Ram Jaipuria Memorial Lecture was conceived in the year 2019. The lecture is an annual event that features an illuminating discourse by an eminent personality on a subject of national significance. The topic of each lecture represents the progressive vision of Dr. Raja Ram Jaipuria. The first Dr. Raja Ram Jaipuria Memorial Lecture held on 30th April 2019 was delivered by Mr. Venkaya Naidu, the Honorable Vice President of India in New Delhi on the topic Education, Entrepreneurship and Ethics. My dear brothers and sisters, I'm <coughs> extremely happy to be here today this morning at this magnificent convention center named after Dr. Bhim Rao Ambedka to deliver the first Dr. Raja Ram Jaipuria Memorial Lecture. I am therefore glad that the ideals and values which Dr. Raja Ram Jaipuria ji upheld all his life have been carefully nurtured by his successors, by his son, grandchildren and other family members. And we all have assembled here to celebrate his idea of empowering the next generations through quality education. The second lecture held in the virtual mode on December 5th, 2020 was delivered by Mr. Nitin Gadkari, Minister for Road Transport and Highways, Minister of Shipping and the MSME, Government of India. Its topic was very appropriate for the country that was overcoming the pandemic. Role of Leadership in Turbulent Times Dr. Rajaram Jaipuriya Ji ke spruti mein मैं अभिवादन करता हूं जिन्होंने अपने जीवन में एक विजन के साथ उद्योग क्षेत्र में तो अच्छा काम किया ही पर स्वाभाविक रूप से उन्होंने शिक्षा के क्षेत्र में भी बहुत बड़ा योगदान दिया है हमारे नए मैनेजमेंट के इसमें प्रोफेशनल भाषा में तीन बातों का उल्लेख होता है कोऑपरेशन कोऑर्डिनेशन एंड कम्युनिकेशन क्या हमारे बीच में है ही है हमारी बातचीत है हमारे निर्णय के साथ सब लोग जुड़े हुए हैं बियॉन्ड दीज मेमोरियल लेक्चर्स सेट आनंद राम जयपुरिया ग्रुप इज मेकिंग अ रियल डिफरेंस इन द फील्ड ऑफ एजुकेशन बाय कंडक्टिंग रेगुलर इवेंट्स वर्चुअल सेशंस कॉन्क्लेव्स एंड समिट्स दैट फीचर डिस्टिंग्विश्ड लुमिनरीज फ्रॉम डिफरेंट फील्ड्स रिनाउंड पॉलिसी मेकर्स हैव शेयर्ड देयर विजन ऑफ इंडियाज फ्यूचर ग्रोथ ऑन आवर प्लेटफॉर्म्स Social reformers have fervently expressed their views on changing the country at grassroots level. Famed sports persons have inspired the young aspirants to pursue their dreams. Best-selling authors have delved into the richness of Indian mythology, Indian culture, and the country's emergence as a superpower in the 21st century. Carrying forward this tradition of highlighting the issues pertinent to India's growth. The third Dr. Raja Ram Jaipuria Memorial Lecture is being delivered by the eminent Swami Swarupananda, Global Head of Chinmaya Mission. The topic of the lecture is Building Strong and Resilient India Through Visionary Leadership. Sait Anand Ram Jaipuria Group of Educational Institutions Always Committed to Quality Education and Nation Building. Empower. Enthuse. Excel. I would now like to invite Sri Shishri Jaipurya, Chairman Sait Anandaram Jaipurya Group, which has been in the field of education for more than 76 years. Presently, the group operates in all the verticals of the education landscape and runs 16 K-12 schools, five preschools, two management institutions, and a teacher's training academy. Mr. Jaipurya is also chairman at Fiki Arise, the vertical of Fiki, which takes care of the interest of independent schools. Over to you, sir. Namaskar. Param Puji Swamiji, my revered mother, 
श्रीमती सुनीति देवी जी अदर मेंबर्स ऑफ माय फैमिली फ्रेंड्स एंड रिलेटिव्स स्टूडेंट्स एंड टीचर्स लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन इट गिव्स मी ग्रेट प्लेजर इन एक्सटेंडिंग अ वॉम वेलकम टू ऑल ऑन द ओकेजन ऑफ द थर्ड डॉक्टर राजा राम जयपुरिया मेमोरियल लेक्चर this is indeed a very momentous and proud occasion for me personally and for the jaipuria family to organize this event successfully for the third year where we discuss issues of national relevance the first lecture was delivered by the honorable vice president of india shri venkaiah naidu ji and the second lecture had shri nitin gadkari ji union minister for transport and highways as the keynote speaker it has been our sincere endeavor to invite speakers from rich and diverse backgrounds to enlighten the citizens of our great country today we have amongst us Swami Swarupanand ji the global head of Chinmaya Mission to share his profound thoughts on building strong and resilient India through visionary leadership I must mention that the stature of this memorial lecture gets considerably heightened with your sagacious presence and blessings your spiritual wisdom and intellectual prowess will lend a different dimension to this lecture series i and my family remain beholden to you sir for gracing this event dr rajaram jaipuria my beloved father in whose memory this memorial lecture has been instituted was an industrialist educationist a philanthropist a visionary and above all a great human being whose achievements were far too many to be detailed here however his commitment to the cause of education envisioned by him as a instrument of empowerment of independent india needs a special mention he established k12 schools pre schools management institutes and also vedic sanskrit sansthan under his leadership the educational institutions incorporated several new age pedagogical practices such as social emotional learning design thinking health curricula digital literacy and value based education strongly rooted in indian culture as a philanthropic initiative he set up smriti bhavans in places of pilgrimage and also a charitable eye hospital i must also make a special mention of a noble project that he completed in association with din dayal sansthan at chitrakoot ram darshan a monument that depicts the life of bhagwan ram and highlights his great ideals and values swami ji we are proud to be the citizens of this great nation which has over several centuries suffered external aggressions and has also been one of the richest nations of the world we have bestowed ancient knowledge and wisdom of the highest order and demonstrated the power of truth and non violence the 20th 21st century however has witnessed 
some startling and unprecedented developments and not all has been favorable in the world in general and in India in particular. Rapid advancements in technology have touched all aspects of our lives. Today, artificial intelligence, machine learning, robotics, virtual reality, and Internet of Things have made the world deeply interconnected. The pace of change has surprised everyone. COVID-19 pandemic is another significant happening of our times, which will not be easily forgotten by the history. And we are all still grappling with its fallout. The recent escalation of conflict among the NATO powers, Russia and Ukraine, is another major event that can have far-reaching repercussions on the world order and peace. Amidst all this turmoil, which has profound consequences for the world, and more importantly for India, we need to find our way, make the country strong and resilient, so that it not only strengthens its own socio-economic base, but also plays a prominent role in negotiating world peace and address some important areas of global concern, such as climate change, cyber security, human rights, and even possibility of a nuclear conflict. These are perhaps some of the very pertinent questions, amongst others, that require immediate attention. It seems to be that, first and foremost, we as a nation need to address our internal issues of poverty, illiteracy, religious intolerance, corruption, health, and well being of our citizens. One of the major challenges is to leapfrog into the 21st century with a strong digital skills. We have to build a robust physical as well as digital infrastructure. We have to modernize our education system to meet the needs of the tech savvy learners. The industry across all sectors need to be strengthened. At the same time, we must make sure that our laws and policies are designed to benefit the people at the bottom of the pyramid. These challenges need to be addressed in a comprehensive manner by the leaders who are visionaries and have a clear purpose. We need good governance and strong monitoring to assess the progress of various initiatives undertaken. We also have a colossal repository of knowledge preserved by our sages and scientists since ages, and we really have not dived deep into it, influenced as we were by the Western culture. Just to illustrate, let me quote a great physicist of our times, Hans Peter Dewar, Emeritus President of the Max Planck Institute in Munich, who succeeded Albert Einstein. He said, and I quote, whenever I give a lecture on quantum physics, I feel as if I am talking on Vedanta. He further added, I studied matter for the last 35 years only to find out that it does not exist. Exactly what Adi Sankracharya said 
long back in the Upanishads. Interestingly, our knowledge cuts across all domains, from speciality to science, from art to commerce, from economics to political governance, and many more. I strongly believe that this century belongs to our great nation. We need someone to guide us, show us the path, and India will find its rightful place in the group of nations to emerge as the glorious Bharat. Here, I am reminded of the words of Alama Iqbal, who wrote, Kuch baat hai ki hasti milti nahi hamari. Kuch baat hai ki hasti milti nahi hamari. Sadiyon raha hai dushman, dore jama hamara. Sare jahan se achcha Hindustan hamara. Sare jahan se achcha Hindustan hamara. I am sure that the third doctor, Raja Ram Jaipuriya Memorial Lecture, will inspire us towards making India strong and resilient. Swamiji, we look up to you for your words of profound wisdom. Thank you and dhanyavad. Thank you, sir, for setting the context with your address. It is my proud privilege to now invite our honorable chief guest for his address. Swami Swarupanandji is the global head of Chinmaya Mission since January 2017, he chairs Central Chinmaya Mission Trust, the apex governing body of Chinmaya Mission Centers and Trusts the world over. He is the Chancellor of Chinmaya University and Chairman of Chinmaya International Residential School in Coimbatore. As an exemplary spiritual leader, Swamiji, has been carrying forward the legacy of his guru, Swami Chinmayanandji. As a token of respect and reverence, Sait Anandaram Jaipurya Group is felicitating Pooja Swamiji by educating 11 underprivileged children in his name for a year. May we now invite Swamiji to deliver the lecture and share his wise thoughts and insights with us all. Over to you, Swamiji. Namaste and greetings to all my dear brothers, sisters, children, elders of my great dear country. Puja Gurudev Swami Chinmayananda, who in our times has been the roaring voice like Swami Vivekananda, insisted that the service of our country is the service of the Lord of Lords. Even Ramchandraji says that there is no greater heaven than the country I am born in. We belong to a great heritage, a great historical, ancient culture, religion, science that made India what they used to call the Soniki Chidiya. Today we can just talk about it and proudly say we are a third world country. I don't think any of you youngsters want to be labeled as a third world country for India has never been and shall never be. For India has always, whenever there has been the time or a need, whenever in crisis or in difficulties, some great visionary avatar saint, sage, master in the field of all sciences including politics, freedom movement, 
leaders, industrialists such as Sri Raja Ram himself has brought out or in this land of Bharat, whenever there has been a need to give a great vision, to lead the people to their pristine glory, this land of Bharat in every generation, in every era has thrown up a leader who can inspire the masses and revive with greater enthusiasm the great vision of our great rishis that created this land of Bharat as a beacon light for the whole world whether it was in this field of spirituality, whether it was in mathematics, whether it was cosmology, whether it was astronomy, astrology, in all various sciences whose evidence are still available. But the sad part is that we do not gr grow up knowing even the grandeur of our history, the grandeur of our sciences and our achievements, whose evidence still exists, but we are made to think that it is all a myth. And we grow up with those ideologies. It's time to make a change. When I was a youngster, grew up in the same education system that we've been growing up and you are in a much better era where we had no pride in being an Indian. No knowledge of what a rich heritage we had and what was still available for us which we could tap into but we lost the very language such as Sanskrit and our local languages. Lose a language and you have lost not only the source of knowledge that is there in that knowledge system but a mindset. Lose a, knowledge, uh, lose a language, lose a culture and lose a mindset. And with the mindset that we could discover long before the modern world had discovered whether it is gravity, whether it is pi, whether it is uh, even they were discovered but was taught the concept of zero and infinity not only in this field of spirituality, but even in mathematics. The feats of engineering that we see, whose residues are still there if we open our minds and see it. The architecture, the engineering feats, the science of medicine, which is again becoming popular, the science of mind mastery, yoga, and the science by which you come to not only recognize every possible potential that you have, but how you can understand and tap into the entire universe and live your life in such a manner that not only you are productive members of society, producing more than what you consume, and giving more than what you take. In fact, our great rishis, our great masters, Swami Chinmayananda himself kept on saying, we are all born to succeed. And particularly, and when I used to hear him as a youth myself, right out of college, or during my college days, I read his books, he used to roar 
that my youngsters are not useless. The youngsters of my country are not useless. They have only been used less. Infinite is the potential that is there in each one of us and each one in our own right are a leader. In the Bhagavad Gita, where we have that science of not only life management, but the science of not only attaining success, but success of great significance. And not only success of significance, but greatness. Little do we know also how to create a vision and with what vision we can live that our great rishis, our avatars, who are themselves such great leaders, let us say even politicians, who gave such grand vision and one of the best and the greatest source of knowledge, not only for giving us a grand vision for our nation building program, for our self development and for our own success and the success of our country. That vision which Sri Krishna gave to Arjuna and mind you, he did not give this knowledge to a failure or dropout. He just temporarily was in that condition where he was ready to give up because the moment we just start thinking of me as an individual and not think as a nation, not think as a world, our rishis gave the great vision Vasudeva Kutumbakam that this whole universe, in fact, this whole earth is our family. And if you understand that we are part of this great country and the progress of our country is our progress. Puja Gurudev Swami Chinmayananda went once to Japan in the 1970s. And after the tragic nuclear explosion at Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Devastated was that country after the Second World War. But grow up not only again as a cultural giant for its, its people, but also an economic giant in the world. For those principles that have been pointed by our great leaders, demonstrated by our great leaders, was being lived by them. Very often we can sit and cry over spilt milk. We can say that the invaders came and destroyed our country, but what are we doing today as citizens of our country? We fear the future of the world and we fear the future of our country. But if you are the youth of the country and you have to live the present and the future, as Gurudev Swami Chinmayananda said, our youth are not useless. They are only used less. And Sri Krishna points out in the Bhagavad Gita, and even if one verse of it we can take and build the vision of our life, then we can understand that how we were such a grand country where people from around the world came to study, where our universities attracted people from around the world. The sciences that went around the world went from Bharat. Whether it was the spiritual science, whether it was the way of living and its uh, ideologies, ideals, virtues that require to be developed. It's value-based education, not just value education, 
but value-based education. And even now, until and unless we have a pride in our identity of being the children of this great land, Bharat, and we start thinking not as individual, but as a nation. In this one generation of you all, my dear youngsters, we can transform ourselves in such a way that in my transformation, my country transforms. And my success is dependent upon the success of my country and my country's success depends on me. When Puja Gurudev Swami Chinmayananda, who in the freedom movement of India even almost died as a freedom fighter in jail, having attained his success as a journalist, went out to search for answers that if my country was so great, then why are we in this present condition? And reach the spiritual masters of our country and realized that where the country had steeped into corruptions, into just following uh, the colonization of the country and our colonial rulers, there were these great saints and sages who were still working, still inspiring, and themselves driven in this national building program. Inspired by that, he took the knowledge of the Bhagavad Gita to the masses. And from that, just as our great people in our country in every field started the rural development program called as COD, Chinmaya Organization of Rural Development. And why I'm telling you this is that he went and besides giving this spiritual knowledge of self-development, how we can, with this knowledge, which was given to Arjuna in the middle of the battlefield to protect his country and lead his country not only to significance after its decadence that Arjuna did not just become victorious, he did not make history, but he made an epic. And this potential as the Gita says, is in each one of us. If we are ready to discover that infinite potential in each one of us, that is given in our books of knowledge, in our scriptures, and the method of developing our mind to be receptive to great discoveries and to be dynamic, to be able to perform in this world, that we bring about productivity. When he went to Japan, as I was saying, he found that even the old people who seemed to have retired were working in their villages, even if it was a simple act of pressing a hole in a rubber which goes to make the, the buffer between the bicycle spokes and the wheels. And he found something very interesting. This man was doing what he could do at his age of 80 or 85. They were so industrious. They were not lazy. And so beautifully, so efficiently, so neatly, he had packed them in the boxes that were given to him. And almost 
a quarter of it he had rejected on the side. Swami Chidmayanda asked him that why have you rejected so many? He showed a small flaw in it. And he said, nobody would have noticed this also. But he said, no. What I do in my village will be packaged under the name of Japan and sent round the world. And if even one country, one person finds defect in Japanese good, the standard of Japanese goods will be affected. So Gurudev just laughed to test him. He said, but you would have made your profit for the work that you have done. He said, no. If Japan's goods are not valued, the economy of my country will suffer. And if the economy of my country suffers, I also suffer. And if my goods are made perfectly, my country's goods are valued, my country's economy will boom. And in the success of my country, Every country man of my country, every successful person of my country will have enough. This is the vision which has been given in the Gita, but we have forgotten that if we work with a higher goal, higher vision, a higher altar of dedication, if we work that whatever field we are in, we not only gain the knowledge, the enthusiasm, the inspiration, as well as a vision of that particular field, profession, science. And we work in that spirit, as Krishna says, Mai Sarvani Karmani Sanyasya. Dedicating all your actions for the progress of our country. Adhyatma Chetasaha with whatever ability or talent we have. Whatever science you studied, whatever profession you take up for your income also, just add that vision that with my progress, how do I serve my country? How do I serve my countrymen? And with that, even serve the world. All we have to do is lift our vision from just me, myself, my prosperity alone. But when we think as a nation, that with my progress, my country progresses, and with my country, I progress. And with whatever knowledge, ability, talent I have, which I can easily perform, all I have to think is, I am part of a larger family, and I have a responsibility, however young or old I may be, that the happiness, the prosperity of my country, I am as responsible as I expect my politicians to be. To live honestly a noble life of service and dedication, producing more than what we consume, giving more than what we take in a short time, in every field of our life, in every science, in every profession, we can tap into our rich Indian knowledge, traditions, culture, heritage, traces of which, thank God, are still there, but we are destroying it today. Because 
first of all, we do not know our grand history. Learn it, find out. And when you have created such an identity for yourself, then you will recognize what potential you have. And with that, when you build for yourself high and nobler goals, in which not only you benefit, but the country benefits. Not only the dynamism that you see that comes from you, the inspiration that comes from you, the sheer vigor and charm that comes from you, that you can make anything happen. Even one verse of the Gita, Uddhared Atmanatmanam, lift yourself by yourself. Na Atmanam Avasadayet. Do not underestimate yourself. Do not keep on criticizing my country is bad, etc. What are you doing to lift the country? This is what our great leaders have taught us. And I am responsible for that. In fact, whenever you will hear, about our Gurukula system. And the word Skula has come from Kula only. Before you went to learn from your teacher, you were given the sacred thread to tell you that you have got three debts to pay. It has got three stands. See how the richness of our culture in every level, our rites, our rituals, our religion, our spirituality, our education system, our professions, our age and stage in life. Everyone who wanted to be a student had to go th through this valedictory function. They had to go through convocations. Today you just throw your hat to the wind and you call it as a convocation. You're given three strands that we've got three responsibilities even as children because we've got three debts to pay. First is Pitruran. To our ancestors who have given us such a stable and even till today such a rich heritage and country, a family that is still joined and living, nourishing their children and cherishing their children, their family traditions, etc., to carry it forward and bring forth generations of people with those lit pride in their heritage, pride in their ancestry and the dedication to live up to their name. As Bharatiyas, we have a debt towards our environment. That's what we call as Devatas. To the ecology, to protect. And third, the Rishis who are great scientists not only in the field of spirituality, but in every possible science. Name it. We have a responsibility to gain that knowledge, revive that knowledge, and to apply that knowledge in contemporary lifestyle. Therefore, great masters like Puja Gurudev, Great people like Raja Ramji invested in the education system and being part of such schools, whether it's Chinmaya schools, where we have 100 schools, whether we have the Jaipur Puriya institutions, take the benefit of those value based education. Try to develop that mindset by which. You can recognize that great, great heritage and work for a vision of united, developed, prosperous, peaceful, loving India.
and bring it to be the beacon light that it always was for the world. And even now you'll be surprised. Our books of sciences are still referred to. Our Mahabharata and Ramayana are referred to as books of science. And you have been brainwashed to think these are mythologies. Speak to the sometimes the professors from foreign universities and you will see how they revere it. So when Puja Gurudev and such leaders brought this in our industries, in our education system, and I'll be very happy to tell you that during this COVID time, our village woman raised more amounts than internationally people have raised with the value systems, with the spirit, that, that dedication that our farmers are suffering. We are too bu busy building IT systems, etc. But our very farmers are suffering. And during COVID time, the most rural villages, when these women of these rural villages, who in the last 20 years, with the inspiration from such great masters as Swami Chinmayananda, with just a little bit of knowledge of the Bhagavad Gita and the training that they got to help other villages. I tell you what these women have done more than even large company CEOs, national companies could raise, give or do. Such is the spirit of the mothers of this country. And we are the children of such mothers who have taught us that great vision that the more we give ourselves, the more great we become. And everybody attains greatness. And don't think that any one of you do not have this leadership quality. Because there's someone looking at you and as Krishna says, that if we keep that we have to work for our nation, just keep that vision in your mind. Whatever, whatever you will do will be of such dynamism, such productivity, of such greatness that others will start admiring you and start, start following you. Thus, rather just be a follower of trends that too also sometimes that dissipates our lives and destroys us. Why don't you be a peer leader and create that peer group that will stand for the country, whether it's the army, or whether it's the civil service, whether it is the politics of the country, or whether it is medicine or the various sciences, our country still has great people. Find them out. Learn from their lives. Be inspired. Be a Bharatiya. The very word Bharatiya means Bha, light. Rati means one who revels. The great vision that our rishis have given that we are one big family. Yeah. And most of us, if we are ready to take up responsibility and know our responsibility, if we know our responsibility, then we must pray that we have the ability to fulfill them. That is the inspiration, even our avatars, even our scriptures, and every God manifestation has demonstrated to us. We derive inspiration from them. And he or she who masters his or her mind can lead one's senses or one's mind. 
such a person. Dio Yona Prachodayat. Getting inspiration from the sun, Bhanu, Bhaskara. Living a life of dedication. The more you give of yourself, the more you glow. The more you glow, the more people admire you, the more people will follow you, the synergy will create a revolution for progress in our country, in all fields. And I wish you all that success, that greatness, which lies in each one of you. Krishna has said it, it's for you. Believe in it. Worship of the Lord is following and living a godly and divine life. Wish you all the best. I invoke the blessings of Bhagwan, of God, and of all the great achievers and masters. May they continue to inspire you and bring forth in you greatness. And one day, you be remembered like these great people, inspiring them even after you have gone from this world. Therefore, Kabir Das Ji says, Jab hum paida huye, jag hase hum roye. Aisi karni kar chalo, hum hase jag roye. Live such a life. And I wish you all the best and my gratitude to all those who are doing this great work in inspiring, educating, and finding opportunities for the progress of our country through our education system and building the nation. My gratitude to the Jaipuria organization, institution, the great leaders, and all of you who are carrying this legacy forward, and all who are benefiting from it. Invoking the blessings of the Lord, may there be fullness in our life. Om Purnamadaha, Purnamidam, Purnat Purnamudachate, Purnasya Purnamadaya, Purnameva Vashishyate, Om Shanti, 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha, Hari Om. Thank you, Pooja. Let Swami. us sit to a, let us sit together here, sitting in our place. Jai Bharat. Jai Bharat. Jai Bharat. Thank you, Pooja Swami Ji, for your exhilarating and motivating speech. Your enlightened views on building a strong and resilient India are inspiring and full of great insights. We are sure they will motivate us all to strive towards excellence and contribute positively towards nation building. I now invite Mr. Saket Jaipurya, Vice Chairman, Seth Anandaram Jaipurya Group, to deliver the vote of thanks. Mr. Saket Jaipurya is also the Executive Director at Guinea Filaments Limited. Over to you, sir. It is my honor to propose the vote of thanks to everyone. Esteemed Swami Sarupanandji, it was indeed a pleasure to have your spiritual guidance, which I feel is uh, missing for youngsters of this generation. I'm sure that all the attendees of this third Dr. Rajaram Memorial Lecture would have greatly benefited from each and every sentence that you have spoken about. It is difficult to summarize some of the key takeaways of your lecture, but I, I will try to talk about some of the points which, were, uh, which, which I found very pertinent. You spoke about the language of Sanskrit, 
I think we will we will try in our educational institutions to um, inculcate more of courses in Sanskrit language because uh, all our texts, as you mentioned, Swamiji, that um, Upanishads or whether it be Bhagavad Gita, all each and every verse you mentioned was uh, so important. Is so, is so important even in today's context. So. We would, we would work as the Jaipuria family and our educational institutions and our other social organizations to definitely uh, take some guidance and inspiration from this and, uh, and have more, more, more lectures and try to teach the youngsters about our ancient texts and the language Sanskrit. You mentioned about the lost uh, potential of our heritage. This has been so true and... Um, I think we should have some more seminars about our great uh, leaders and what really India has given to the world. It is very important that the youngsters learn and learn from this. You spoke about the uh, Vasudeva, Vasudevai uh, Kutumbha concept. I hope each and every individual and each and every nation in, in uh, today's time is able to understand this concept from the Upanish Upanishads that you uh, mentioned. I would also like to thank um, my grandmother who has joined us, Srimati Suniti Devi Jaipuria, my father, Sri Shashir Jaipuria, who has instituted the uh, memorial lectures on his uh, father's, Dr. Rajaram Jaipuria's name, and all members of the Jaipuria family. I would also like to thank all the attendees. Uh, one thing which I would like to also say about um, Dr. Rajaram Jaipuria was that he also always believed in the nation first or the industry first concept rather than his own individual or his own company. This you have mentioned uh, about how Swami Vivekananda and um, how uh, Swami Ch Chinmayanand also mentioned about uh, um, that we should think about India first rather than our own self. So thank you once again, Swamiji, and thank you everybody. You have been... Uh, um, Thank you again for joining us from Australia. And it, I, uh, we realize it is 11 o'clock in, in the night now. And uh, uh, we will definitely use this uh, guidance of yours. We will uh, learn from every uh, sentence that you have sp uh, spoken. And uh, definitely we will try what best we can do for the youngsters to uh, know more about the potential of India and, and our ancient uh, heritage. I would also like to thank uh, our students who, um, who participated uh, in the invocation and the uh, young bright anchors of this event. Th thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir, for your eloquent expression of gratitude. On this note, we come to the end of the third Dr. Rajaram Jaipuriya Memorial Lecture. I'm sure that all the viewers must have extracted something of great value from this event. Thank you all for your presence. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you, Thank Swamiji. You. We are goodbye. greatly blessed. Hari Om and Hari Om. Best, best wishes for all of you in your wonderful work. And I hope to meet you all in person sometime. Hari Om. Thank you. Ji. Thank you, Swamiji. Hari Om. Hari Om.